So Ubuntu 1810, which is codenamed Cosmic Cuttlefish, is just about to be released. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the new features. And first off, we've got a nice new wallpaper. Well, they have gone with the animal style, although they've kept with the same old Ubuntu colours. But don't think it's just the same old theming, because we actually have got a new style theming called Yaru which was formerly known as the community theme. I've actually opted for the dark version of the theme. I thought I would give it a look, and I have to say, for the most part, it does actually look quite nice. Where we are going to require sudo privileges, the authentication dialog box is bright white. But that does seem to be about the only part which I have found that is the wrong colour. I could go back to having the Yaru light theme. I noticed that the close, minimize, and maximize buttons could be moved with this version of GNOME, which is GNOME 3.30. By default, they are on the right hand side, but I prefer the traditional Ubuntu style and have them on the left hand side. And talking about GNOME application versions, I noticed a couple of applications have been held back further than the GNOME 3.30, for example, Nautilus or Files is at version 3.26. We do get LibreOffice version 6.1.2. And for the major underlying components, we have Linux kernel 4.18, Mesa 18.2.2, and you can install the NVIDIA 390 graphics drivers, which is actually a little bit behind compared to the Windows version for the NVIDIA drivers. In fact, the NVIDIA graphics drivers have not progressed in major version since Ubuntu 18.04, which was the long-term support release. Yes, Ubuntu 18.10 is only supported for nine months. It is an interim release. One item I did notice on the release notes was upgrades on the i386, the 32-bit architecture. Users of 32-bit will not be allowed to upgrade to Ubuntu 18.10 as dropping support for that architecture is being evaluated, and users of it should not be stranded on a release of a shorter support window than the release they're already running, so in other words, the long-term support release. The ISO files have not been available for the main version of Ubuntu for, I think it was at least the last version, or at least the last two versions but 32-bit support for the derivatives has actually diminished in this release. It is only Zubuntu and Lubuntu that are currently offering 32-bit support. So yeah, Kubuntu and Ubuntu Budgie have dropped it. Ubuntu Mate and, as I said, the main version of Ubuntu had already dropped 32-bit support. There has been a greater emphasis placed on Snap-based applications. Looking in the software store, the editor's picks seem to be Snap-based applications. So source Snap Store. And if you're looking at snapcraft.io store on the internet, if you click on one of the applications and then go to the install, it gives you the option of viewing it in the desktop store. It doesn't just work for Ubuntu 18.10 or even the GNOME versions of Ubuntu. I was also able to use the link in the KDE Plasma desktop in KDE Neon. An underlying improvement to Snap applications has been a faster startup speed. One feature that I believe was supposed to be pre-installed with this version of Ubuntu was GS Connect, the GNOME Shell integration with KDE Connect, which would have provided you pop-up alerts when you receive calls or text messages and allowed integration so your multimedia player could be controlled via your phone. But from what I understand, it was too unstable to include in this current release, so perhaps we can look forward to it in the next version of Ubuntu, so that would be 19.04. And taking a look at the show applications does give us a look at the new icon theme. So yeah, some of the default applications have new icons. I have to say the icons do look quite nice. These are not necessarily all the pre-installed applications. I have added a few things as part of my testing. And a final mention for some of the underlying improvements. So there's improved fingerprint scanner support. The newer kernel gives us improvements with USB 3.2 and Type-C, as well as better power savings. I believe there was meant to be some improvements with the compression speed of the system install. However, I believe the ISO has gotten bigger. It was the best part of 1.9 gig. However, this is a testing release and not the final ISO. Anyway, that was a look at some of the changes we can expect to see with Ubuntu 18.10, Cosmic Cuttlefish. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.